News this morning. Good morning. It is 530 on Thursday, September the 5th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, yesterday was another beautiful day and hopefully we can see much of the same today once we get a little bit of fog out of the area. Let's bring in meteorologist Kelly McShane this morning for a breakdown of what to expect on this Friday Eve. Kelly. Good morning, Will. We are expecting a little bit of fog this morning, but overall pretty calm conditions as we start off your Thursday. Outside the WIMT studios, not looking like too much fog out there. However, into Harlan and Bell counties, you're seeing less than one mile of visibility. So be careful on the roads this morning and especially in the valley areas. Now temperatures a little bit on the warm side for folks to the southeast. 66 in Harlan, 67 in Middlesbrough. London, you're at 66 degrees this morning and Moorhead a little bit cooler at 63. Now, Satellite and radar really not showing too much in eastern Kentucky. However, notice those clouds to our southeast. That is from Hurricane Dorian, and we could see a few more clouds later on today. And I will have more on that as well as Hurricane Dorian here in just a little bit. All righty, Kelly, thank you. Well, the death toll from Hurricane Dorian continues to rise in the Bahamas this morning. 20 people were killed and officials say more are expected. The now category three storm is slowly making its way up the southeastern U.S. coast. It is expected to bring intense winds and flooding. That is already being felt in downtown Charleston, South Carolina. Police have shut down more than a dozen streets due to floods there. While Florida has been largely spared, millions from Georgia to southeastern Virginia could still feel the brunt of Dorian. Triple threat of heavy rain, high tides, and storm surge. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. I'm preparing for the worst. Kentucky Baptist Relief now plans to send a crew to North Carolina to help with hurricane relief efforts. They plan to send 100 people. They say they will go unless Dorian shifts further east. They are not exactly sure what part of North Carolina the volunteers will help. That depends on where Dorian makes the most impact. Well, Kentucky emergency crews are reworking their hurricane plans. Instead of going to Florida, they'll be heading to North Carolina also. A nurse strike team will lay head to North Carolina. They will be working in shelters, providing medical support for people with chronic conditions. They'll also help people who need oxygen or dialysis. The team will be there for about two weeks. A somber couple of days here in eastern Kentucky as people across the region and state mourn the death of a retired state trooper, Lauren Doc Holliday. Last night, police, firefighters and EMS workers escorted his body back to hazard. Holliday died Tuesday in a crash on the Hal Rogers Parkway. Today, we hope to learn his funeral arrangements. He served many roles, including as a member of Governor Matt Bevin's executive detail. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on the governor's emotional goodbye community uh, and yesterday Governor Bevin was in Perry County Wednesday to announce a lot of new jobs but at the end of his remarks the governor had a difficult time talking about a man who meant a lot to him who died in a crash Tuesday there was a guy who was a young man in the grand scheme of things older than some in this room but younger than many of us 43-year-old Donald Doc Lauren Holliday died Tuesday when his truck and a commercial vehicle collided on the Howe Rogers Parkway in Clay County. It's tough to talk about. A good man. A man that would have given you the shirt off his back. Governor Bevin says what makes this even more tragic is when it happened. And to lose his life uh, the day before his birthday here in this community, it's a real blow. To my family, he was a, a good friend and a good man. and. Uh, he will be greatly missed. Holiday was part of Bevin's detail and had retired from state police. He was also the first school resource officer for Jackson Police. But I just encourage you, please, just put your arms around his family. Specifically mentioning Holiday's son. His young son, Bennett. A great kid. Holiday started with the Harlan State Police Post and worked his way to be on the governor's detail from 2016 to 2017. Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Holiday also worked with the Hazard Police and the Perry County Sheriff's Office.
The finishing touches are underway at the Appalachian Wireless Arena for this year's Shaping Our Appalachian Region Summit, or SOAR. Those involved say the event is expected to be larger than last year, which means a lot of preparations. The summit will kick off this afternoon with brainstorming and overview sessions. This will allow people to contribute ideas and work together in a new way. A new pitch competition will take place at the Appalachian Center for the Arts at 5 p.m. Executive Director Jared Arnett says the SOAR partners and production team work hard to make sure the summit is something those in the region can be proud of. If you wonder, is there a future in Appalachia, you can walk through this place and know there are people working to create that and make sure there is. The summit will follow Friday along, among other things. Arnett says he expects an announcement from the governor and Congressman Hal Rogers regarding the Kentucky Wired project. New this morning, two people charged after a neighbor found a five-year-old boy running around outside will appear in court. Deputies in Knox County arrested Bridget Doolin and Ray Mills Jr. Investigators say both were sleeping inside a home in the Woolham community. Deputies say the two did not know where the two-year-old and five-year-old they were calling for were. Doolin and Mills are charged with endangering the welfare of a minor. This morning, lawyers and minors return to Charleston, West Virginia. It marks day two of an evidentiary hearing over hot goods coal. The Department of Labor argues until Black Jewel miners receive their back wages, the coal should stay put. While attorneys argue there is no proof the miners dug that specific coal out. Miners listened in yesterday at the protest site frustrated. They're trying to claim that the coal was run. Uh, before any of this went on, then, then that coal should be should be able to be sold. It's all mixed together. They can't separate it. Yeah, if they had that intentions, they should have moved it out before they filed bankruptcy. They should have kept us working. Now, also yesterday, we learned one of the original five miners protesting on the tracks was injured in a mine accident out of state. Now, the state labor cabinet has sent dozens of letters in the last few weeks to require companies to post their bond requirement. It is in a new report from the Herald Leader. Black Jewel did not post the bond. It is why miners have not been paid in weeks. That bond covers a month's worth of pay. The attorney's general, the attorney general's office said no coal companies in the state had paid that. The Herald Leader reports each letter from the state gives companies 15 days to respond or pay the bond. In Rowan County, state police are searching for three people they say assaulted a man. The victim is 64 years old. Police say the assault happened at a private campground on Cave Run Lake. They left in a silver or tan Chevy Avalanche. Police say if you know anything about this, to call Post 8. In Clay County, deputies arrested 25-year-old Jeremy Napier. Tuesday night, Clay County Sheriff's deputies received a warrant for Napier out of Muhlenberg County. They were able to arrest him without any issues. Napier is charged with rape and sodomy. He was taken to the Clay County Detention Center. Well, Governor Matt Bevin traveled across the mountains yesterday, making announcements for infrastructure and jobs. The biggest was here in Perry County, with more than another stop was in Knox County, rather, where he made an announcement to help drivers. WIMT's Hannah Reynolds has more. Governor Matt Bevin spent his Wednesday traveling throughout eastern Kentucky making announcements with the Transportation Cabinet. We have in this Transportation Cabinet gone out to the community and said, where if we had the money to provide to you, where would you spend it? Where do you need the money? Where do you want the money? The main focus of Governor Bevin's visit to Knox County was his announcement for a large amount of money awarded for infrastructure. And I want to announce that we are happy to bring not only to the city of Barbersville, uh, $62,000 for drainage on Johnson Lane, specifically for this town. But that was not all. But we also want to announce 17 additional projects in this county. 17 roads implicated as needing work will be resurfaced. Knox County Judge Executive Mike Mitchell says he is thankful for the money as it is attention, he says, is long overdue for the county. This is uh, probably twice as much money that normally comes down uh, on discretionary spending. I don't know that Knox County has ever gotten $762,000. Mitchell says he hopes to get started on the work for these roadways within the next month. In Knox County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News.
Now in Leslie County this morning, Governor Bevin announced there will be 13 projects that receive similar awards for road work there as well. Well, state leaders are taking the dangers of vaping seriously. Their new push to keep Kentuckians healthy. Temperatures will be a bit cooler today and Hurricane Dorian is still churning off the Carolina coast. I'll have the latest details coming up.